how can I maximize the benefit to my children when I die? So this is the last section that generally talk about. There is this window of opportunity as you're in this phase before moving to into retirement to maximize the benefit to your children. It doesn't often have much impact for you or your spouse, but there is a significant impact for your beneficiaries, particularly if that's adult children. How can I maximize the benefit to my children when I die? This really depends on the components of your superannuation fund. So generally your superannuation, the, the money you've got in your superannuation fund is made up of different types of contributions. So your 9.5% that your employer is putting in this financial year, it's called con tax components. Any salary sacrifice contributions is called a tax components. Personal deductible contributions are core tax components within your fund. What you've done by getting those that money into your super fund is you've paid 15% tax on the way in, into the fund. And they're called concessional because generally you're paying less tax than if you had have paid income tax on that money. That's why it's called concessional. Now these concessional contributions are called taxed elements and those taxed elements when they pass, say for example you die and they pass to non-financial dependents, so these like adult children, then those components are taxed at 16.5% before they get the money. Now post-tax contributions, like that money that you put in after you've paid tax, tax on it, like we talked about with that investment property, you've sold the investment property, you've, got, you've paid the tax on the capital gain, and you've still got $100,000 outside of super, if you put that $100,000 inside of super as a non-concessional contribution, that's called a post-tax contribution, non-concessional contribution, and that is defined in within the fund as a tax-free element. And if those components transfer to a financial non-dependent on the event of your death, then they're tax-free. So the question is, how do you increase the tax-free elements and decrease the taxed elements. That's what we're just going to explain now. Death benefit paid to a financial non-dependent. There'd be potentially $16,500 tax paid on the tax component. So, got $120,000 in our super. There's taxed components of $100,000. And if that passed to a financial non-dependent, they'd pay 16.5% tax on that money. And so rather than getting $100,000, then they'd get $83,500. $20,000 tax-free portion comes tax-free. So the net benefit would be $103,500 rather than the $120,000. So your beneficiaries are missing out on the difference there. So what's that? $16,500. Implement what we call a cash-out recontribution strategy. So what we do is if you've satisfied a condition of release you can and you're over age 60 you can pull out all of your superannuation you just withdraw it all sometimes we leave a little balance in there of a thousand dollars and we with, withdraw all of the funds and deposit it into your bank account then these components here are lost because it's just money in your bank account they then turn into just standard money 120,000 in your bank account components that don't apply at all then what you can do is then contribute that money, that $120,000, back into your superannuation fund as a non-concessional contribution. And then it's defined that $120,000 in your super fund is defined as tax-free components. Then, if it's a tax-free component and it was to pass to your financial non-dependents because it's fully tax-free elements, then the full $20,000 passes to them rather than having to pay the $16,500. So simply by just doing this quick cashing it out, putting it back in again, you could potentially save your beneficiaries, your adult children, $16,500. If you've got half a million dollars in your super fund, then you multiply that by, you know, potentially by about five. So it doesn't have much benefit for you or your spouse, but it does have benefits for your beneficiaries. Cash out recontribution strategy. There are a few things to factor in there. Uh, is there tax payable on the withdrawal? So if you're under age 60 and you're withdrawing over $185,000, tax might be payable if, if you're withdrawing the money. The other thing is, are you eligible to recontribute it? If you turn 65 and you're not working, you're not allowed to put money back into your super fund. So you might not be able to get it back in. Are you within the contribution limit? So $180,000 contribution limit. Or if you're under 65, you can bring forward two years and put, out, put in $450,000. And are you expecting an inheritance? So sometimes we don't do the cash out recontribution strategy because there's an expected inheritance inheritance and we want to get that money into the super fund and we don't want to use up the contribution limit. So sometimes we just wear the, the risk. And there also is one other thing that you can factor in as well is anti-detriment benefits. And this is a, an overhang from a Costello era change where 
Uh, Christian Super, Super actually pays these anti-detriment benefits and it's trying to reimburse you the 15% contributions tax on your money that you put into your super fund. You die and don't get to utilize the money. So you can claim these anti-detriments on the event of death and you'll get back some of the 15% contributions tax. But if you ca do the cash out recontribution strategy, uh, then you miss out on these anti-detriment benefits because they only apply to tax components. Often we just err on the side of caution and we do the cash out recontribution strategy because you know that there's going to be a benefit or there's more likely to be a benefit there. Uh, but you do need to factor that in as well.